Team Fimo gets a controversial split decision over Sander Martin. He gets off the canvas, uh, being dropped in the second round. He gets up and rallies to win, controversially. Um, the scorecards read 95-94, uh, 96-93, 97-92. You know, um, everyone's being, you know, upset about the 97-92. Saying that it's too wide, I also I think it's too wide as well. But there's some people out there saying that Sander Martin got robbed and all that. I don't believe so. I, I actually I think Tiafimo done enough to win this fight. You know, Sander Martin, you know, wasn't throwing enough. He was relying a bit too much on counters. You know, you can't rely too much on counters, man. You gotta throw some. You gotta throw some things. You know, you gotta lead sometimes. You know, and Tia was doing most of the leading. He didn't look impressive doing it, but he was doing most of the leading while, you know, Santa Mom was waiting for Tio to get off, you know, encounter. And, um, you know, I'm not saying that you, um, someone can't win a fight countering, but, you know, usually you have success winning a fight countering when you don't get hit most of the time. That's what Santa Mom was doing. Now, don't get me wrong, he did show some good defence in there, but he also got, got caught with some good shots at the same time as well, you know. Especially, you know, when his nose was bloody, like, early on in the fight. You know, very early on, you know. So when you get hit more than your opponent does and you're relying on counters, it's kind of a recipe to lose the fight. Um, but in the seventh round, there was another knockdown that Martin scored over Tia, but that didn't get counted. And it's from that exact same shot, which was the right hook, um, when Tia was caught coming in. Now, on Tia's performance, right? Oh, man. How do I say this without being too harsh on him? Because I really feel like there's something going on in there. There has been something going on in there, actually. Let me not say I feel like I know there's something been going on in there in terms of mental issues and whatnot. You know, the Cambosis fight, he came in there with so many issues going into it. It was unreal. And the fact they made it as competitive as he did, you know, with all these issues coming in, psst. Mm. But, like, first of all, Where's his jab? I know you're fighting a southpaw, so it's going to be hard to get off your jab. But at least still throw the jab. I mean, Lomachenko's a southpaw. You know, he's a higher level, you know, fighter than Sandal Martin. But against Lomachenko, he's throwing the jab a lot more. And some people say, oh, but his jab against Lomachenko and that factor because he only landed like two of them for this amount of rounds and blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. A jab doesn't always have to land in order to be effective. You know, the fact that Tia was throwing a jab, you know, we bit landing on Loma's gloves, landing that thin air, landing his body or something like that, or just landing on Loma's head, you know, it keeps Loma occupied. It keeps him thinking about the shot, you know. It can also blind him too, you know, because sometimes when Tia was throwing a jab, he also threw the, you know, the right behind it as well. So a jab doesn't always have to land in order for it to be effective, you know. It's not going to be scoring, yes, but... It's going to keep your opponent occupied. It's going to be harder for your opponent to come in when they've got a punch coming right at them, you know? Especially with someone as big and powerful as Team Female Lopez is, as opposed to Loma, who's not really big at, you know, the, at the weight division to begin with, you know? And against someone like Lomachenko, who was using that jab a lot more, his jab was really, you know, keen at fight, you know? But against Sonna Martin, he just wasn't using it. He weren't using it. Same thing in the Cambosa fight, just not using his jab. He could have won that fight, even with all these fucking issues, if he had just used the jab more. If he just used the jab more. Cambos, we knew. I knew this from a long time ago. I knew this from a long time ago that Cambos' head is just literally dead to be hit. All you could do is jab the guy and you're scoring points on him. Uh, Mickey Bay had success doing it. Lee Selby had success doing it. Devin Haney dominated this guy just by using the jab in the first fight. Just by using the jab. And I was saying this at the post-fight interview for Lopez Cambosas. If he used his jab more, he would have won the fight. But he was just so intent in taking Cambosas out, throwing punches with no game plan whatsoever, he got caught like he did here. You know, you know, against Sander Martin, he was just throwing power shots without setting it up. And don't get me wrong, he was landing some of those good power shots. You know, T's still got good timing, he's still got quick hands, but he's not setting up the shots. Put the shots together. Throw a jab. Double it. Triple it. 
jab to the body, right to the head. You know what I mean? Like, he just won't front win the jab. And another thing, why does he carry his hand so low if he doesn't move his head? It's one thing carrying your hands low if, and you're moving your head like Muhammad Ali, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard sometimes, you know, name your, you know, Tyson Fury, you know, name as many fights as you can. You know, it's one thing carrying your hands low if you can move your head. Floyd Mayweather, you know, that's one thing. But having your hands down while you don't move your head makes no sense at all. You're going to get hit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? And his head is so high as well. Like, his chin is in the air, you know. So every time he leapt in, you know, every time he leapt in, Salomon was looking to counter, he was able to take advantage of Tio. Always able to check him when he went tried to, you know, close in. Because Tio keeps his head so high up in the air. He doesn't set his shots up. He throws himself a balance trying to come at Sandal Martin. That he gets checked a lot of the times he tried to do it. You know? So I just don't understand, you know. If you're going to have your hands low, move your head. You know? Move your head. If not, keep your hands up. You know? Like, I don't understand when fighters try and do this hands down shit. But they don't even move their fucking head. It makes no sense. You know, have your chin in the air, but you don't move your head. You know? I, I, I don't understand that. You know? And his lead hand constantly down. That's why he kept on getting caught with the right hook over and over and over again. That's how we got clipped against Cambosas. He came rushing him, lead hand down. Cambosas clipped him with a right hand, dropped him. And Cambosas is not even a fucking puncher. You know? Sandal Martin's not even a puncher. And he knocks Tio down twice. It's just the second time he got knocked down. The referee didn't fucking count it. You know? Like. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. It's like. He's kind of regressed as a fighter. Sticking with his father. Like. He, oh, he needs to get rid of his father, man. His father is nothing but trouble. It's nothing but. Tr he's nothing but trouble, man. Yeah, we should go back with Joey Gamash. Or, you know, find another trainer or something. Like, his father is not good for him. His father is a troublemaker. Always wants to spotlight on him. He's always, he always wants to be the centre of fucking attention. This guy's always starting shit. He's just one of those people that's so loud. But they, they talk shit because they know other people are going to fight for them. He, he kind of reminds me of that person, man. Like, oh, he needs to get rid of his father. I know it's not easy, but he's not improving as a fight. He's regressing. At this point, at his age, we should be seeing improvements. We should be seeing this guy moving his head. We should be seeing him stick to a jab. You know, we should be seeing him not rush his work. You know, we should be seeing him, him seeing him find the inside. Block punches when he needs to. We should be seeing that. In the Lomachenko fight, it looks so much better. In the Colme fight, it looks better. I know it was only a two-round fight, but in the Colme fight, he was using his jab. You know? But the Cambosas fight, in this fight, he just, it's like he fought with no game plan whatsoever other than to take his opponent out. You can't do that. Can't do that at the highest level. You've got to have a game plan in there. Because these guys will take your fucking head off. Like Regis Progre. They're talking about putting him in Regis Progre. Regis Progre will fuck him up. We'll put him on a stretcher right now. You know, I'm talking about putting him there with Josh Taylor, you know? I mean, what's to say Josh Taylor wouldn't, you know, cause him massive problems? I know he didn't look great in his last fight, you know, but what's to say Josh Taylor wouldn't cause him problems? You know, like, that's another thing. I've always felt like Devin Haney would beat Teofimo Lopez. I've always felt like that. Um, I feel like this, like, since 2019, when both of them were on the come up, well... Both of them won their world titles that same year. But they were still, you know, kind of on the come up then. They're still kind of as very young. Um, back then, both of them. Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> but I just felt like the styles, you know, Haney's slick, you know, his quick feet, quick hands, countering, you know, his shot selection, his jab, his head movement, you know, his height and reach. I just felt like that would have gave Tia problems. Tia ain't got the quickest feet. You know, he ain't going to great his head movement. You know. But, 
but I always felt like back then it would be close, you know. And I even said when when I picked Devin Haney to win that, you know, around that time that I'll pick Devin Haney to win that fight by majority decision. But I need to see Devin Haney, you know, in a better competition to see if I can verify that. You know, that was at a time when Devin Haney had, hadn't been anyone of note at all, you know. But since Theo lost to Cambosas and whatnot, how he looks like that in that fight and how he looks here against Sandal Martin and how Haney's, you know, improved as a fighter. I'm picking Haney to win that fight. Easily. You know? Because, you know, Tio being that defensively irresponsible is going to get caught with Devin Haney over and over and over again. He's going to get counted. He's going to get checked. Haney's going to make him look like a fool. You know? Just saying, you know? But... Oh no, he just needs to, he needs to, he needs to get rid of his fucking father. He needs to get rid of him, man. He needs to get rid of him. He's too young to be regressing as a fighter. He's too young. He's only 25. You should be seeing improvements from this guy. You should be seeing that. And he needs to cut off the ring too. I mean, geez. I mean, against Loma, he cut off the ring better. But against Sano Mine, what, he, he, what was he doing? You know, what was he doing? Like, <sighs> but and I think this guy's also got problems mentally as well. You know, he's not on the greatest terms with his ex-wife or soon to be ex-wife. You know, he was having problems with that situation going to Cambosa's fight. You know, he's had problems with mental health as well. Um, I think there's an interview where he said he wants to end his life on two different occasions. You know, and I think he's, I think at some point he was on medication for mental health, you know. But I like Tufim Lobos. I actually do like him as a fire. You know, when he beat Lomachenko, I actually was, in, you know, inspired by that. You know, when he beat Lomachenko, I was like, wow. You know, him being 23 years old, coming in as an underdog, not that many fights. Beating someone like Lomachenko, who's a two-time Olympic gold medalist, three-weight world champion, unified, you know, lightweight champion, you know. That was inspiring. The way he just neutralised Lomachenko. Like, people can make all the fucking excuses they want. <laughs> Idiots. But if any, anyone that really is objective and uh, analyses boxing well can see that T Fimo, you know, really stuck to a good game plan in that fight and was able to neutralise Lomachenko that way. And that was when Joey Gamash was in the corner, by the way. You know, but yeah, hopefully he just get something sorted. Out. Hopefully, you know, he gets his mental health sorted out. And I saw in the post fight interview where you know, I think before the school, actually not the post fight interview, but before the scorecards got read, he was asking, "Do I still got it? Do I still got it?" And I'm not even gonna critique him for that, man. That's just I, I feel bad for him. I do. I know I've been critiquing him, but I'm not critiquing him to be harsh on him like that. I just, oh no, I just really want to see improvements in the guy because he really has the potential. That's just so frustrating. He has the potential. You know, he has the potential. He does. He has the goods to be a good fighter, but it's just certain things like certain outside influences that are just not helping him progress as a fighter. It's not. And he needs to get rid of him now. He needs to deal with him now. You know, he has to deal with it. Because if he wants to stay at the top level and he's still dealing with them issues, he's going to get destroyed badly. He's going to get destroyed. Like, I always felt like the Tio that beat Tank Davis, uh, sorry, the Tio that beat Loma would beat Tank Davis. But the Tio now? Fuck you yeah, now. Tank Davis will destroy him. Tank will destroy him. Having his head high up in the air like that. Lead hand down. Tank will kill him. You know. But anyways, yeah. We're still, do I still got it? That's just really sad to hear, man. I've never heard a fighter ask that in the ring. They may ask that in private. They may ask that in private, yeah. They may say that after retirement when they're, you know, um, talking about past experiences and how they felt at the time. But I've never heard a fighter say that in the ring. While they're still active. 
Especially being his age, 25, asking, does he still got it? Man. I do feel for the guy. I do feel for the guy. I don't want to... I'm trying not to rag on him, but I'm just... Yeah, when, when I point out these certain things, I'm not trying to, you know, get on to him or anything like that. I'm just... I'm a little bit annoyed. I'm just a little annoyed, you know. And I'm pretty sure he's a little bit annoyed of himself when he's asking himself questions like, do I still got it? You know... Oh man, please, please. Um, he's not gonna watch this, but please, like, just sort out the issues that you have, man. If you want to continue boxing, just please sort out the issues you have so you can, re you know, reach your true potential, you know. And another thing as well that was concerning, you know, in a post fight interview, you know, he wanted to bring his son in the ring, right? And at first, it seemed like his wife was willing to bring him into the ring, right? But security, for some reason, wouldn't let him in the ring. I mean, fucking. Up. Whatever, you know, but later on, he asked for a son in the ring and he kept an answer for a son and his wife just wouldn't bring his son into the ring. You know, it's like, what? And they're not in the greatest of terms either. It's like, why would you not try and bring, you know, the father of your child into the ring? You know, and he was like, he said in the interview, you know what, I can't even have my kid. You know, come on, guys, like, and after that, after he said that, he took his medal off because he got handed a WBC medal. And after he said that, he took off his medal. You know, that might have been a sign of frustration, man. You know, because, you know, him and his wife have been having issues, you know. And it seemed like at first he didn't really get to see his son. Oh, man, that, that's just too much issues to have at such a young age, man. Too much issues. But... Hopefully with this, you know, Tiafema can regroup, get a whole new team, whole new trainer, f you know, fuck his dad, you know, as a trainer, you know, his dad is a, you know, get rid of your dad, man. I know it's his dad, but if you want to take this thing serious, you got to think hard. And I know, you know, when you're at a situation, you try not to listen to what people say, you know, especially those that never steps to ring in their life. But sometimes those people know what they're talking about. Maybe they know what they're talking about. Maybe people that watch the sport in and out, you know, because some of these people that have never stepped in the ring, right, watch the sport more than boxers watch the sport themselves, you know? So maybe they know a little bit what they're talking about. And when you're asking yourself questions like, do I still got it? And they're telling you constantly to leave your father because you're regressing and that you haven't looked good since you ditched your trainer, Joey Gamash, you know? Maybe they, maybe they know what they're talking about. You know, so maybe you should take heed of what some people are saying. I know some people are trying to, be, you know, some people be bad and say bad shit about him and cussing him, criticizing him. And, you know, I haven't got anything good to say about him. I'm, I'm not saying you should listen to those people, but listen to people that, you know, are objective. I want to see you improve as a fighter, you know, in the most polite way possible. I think you should listen to those people, you know, just get a whole new trainer. I mean, a whole new environment. He just needs to learn something. Like, there was a while back where they was talking about, you know, you should go train under Eddie Reynoso. Now, I don't think you should go train necessarily under Eddie Reynoso because it seems like Reynoso fighters, for some reason, just tend to... Their kryptonite tends to be fighters that know how to move, you know. But, in all fairness, I don't know who exactly you should go train with, but he just needs a new trainer. And I don't think it should be Eddie Reynoso, in all fairness. You know, although Eddie Ray, Eddie, well, I was going to say Eddie may force him to be dedicated, but, you know, you had Ryan Garcia, who Canelo called out for not being dedicated, and Andy Ruiz, you know, so. Was Jonathan Banks a good fit? Maybe, maybe he should go, go to the Kronk, go train with Fury. Him and Fury are cool, you know. Fury picked him to beat Lomachenko, you know, Fury was, picked him to beat Kalme as well, and Tio picked him to beat Wilder. You know, so him and Fury are called, you know, maybe Fury can, you know, you know, tell him some things here and there, you know, I know. And some people say, oh, how are you saying you should go with Fury when you don't even fucking like Fury? Just because I don't like the guy doesn't mean I can never say something positive about him. You know what I mean? <laughs> just because I criticize so doesn't mean I can never say anything positive about him. But, you know, I'm just putting out possibilities there. You know, him and Fury are called, they, you know, they support each other. You know, they've got a bit of history here and there, you know. Maybe you should go with someone that he's a little familiar with, you know? Maybe you should go train with that person. 
And him and Fury both had mental issues in the past. Both of him and Fury have had problems. Maybe we can re relate to each other in some instance. And Fury's got over, well, I would say completely got over it, but, you know, he's, you know, overcome, he's overcame his issues one way or another. And maybe, you know, Fury can help him in that regard, you know. I don't know, but I, I just, something just needs to change, man. Something needs to change. I hope it does change soon, man. Hopefully Tio isn't too stubborn and thinks that everything is working fine when it's clear to us, to everyone, and to him himself, that it isn't, you know. Hopefully he's not denying, and hopefully he gets everything fixed, because I really do like the guy. I do sympathise the guy. You know, his Lomachenko win really inspired me, you know, becoming like a very, you know, a lightweight champion. Um, at, what was he, 22 years old, when he beat Richard Kome? Yeah, 22 years old. And then beating someone like Lomachenko at 23, you know. That was really inspiring, man. But since then, shit has been left, you know. So, I, I, I really do think, I really do hope things get better for the guy, you know. I really do hope things do get better for the guy, but things just need to be improved mentally and, you know, technical improvements as well. Like, seriously, get them hands up. If you're not going to move your head, get them hands up. You know, not everyone needs to have their hands down. Like, I don't know what it is with this hands down, hands down thing, you know. Why have your hands down if you don't move your head? You're just asking him to get hit. And it's not like Tia's got the quickest feet either. It's not like he's got the greatest footwork either. So it's not like he can get in and out, you know. You know, in and out of range, you know. But anyways, I made my point. Um, I'm just going to repeat myself from Darren in. But Tia did win this fight, but he didn't look good doing it. And things just need to change, so... I do wish uh, Tio the best. I do wish him the best. Uh, yeah. Anyways, so the first, I'm out.